Today, we're going to explore how we expand quotients that have been raised to a power. So, let's begin. So let's begin by taking a look at how we can expand a quotient such as 3 over 4 that's been raised to the power of 5. Now when something's to the power of 5, what it means is it is that value times itself 5 times. So it's going to be 3 over 4 times itself 5 times. Now when you're multiplying fractions with fractions, you multiply the numerators together and you multiply the denominators together. Now when we look at the top line, we've got 3 times itself 5 times, which is equal to 3 to the power of 5. When we look at the denominator, we've got 4 times itself 5 times, so that's going to be equal to 4 to the 5th power. So therefore, what we've found here is that the quotient of 3 over 4, all raised to the 5th power, is equal to 3 to the 5th power over 4 to the 5th power. Okay, so let's have a look at another example, this time using unknowns. What if we've got the quotient of A over B, all to the power of 4? Well, when we expand this, this is the same as saying A over B, multiplied by itself four times. Now when we multiply fractions together, you multiply the numerators together, so that's going to be a times a times a times a, and the denominators together, so it's going to be b times b times b times b. So as you can see, we've got a times itself four times. That's the same as saying a to the fourth power. We've got b times itself four times, which is b to the fourth power. So therefore, the quotient of a over b, all raised to the fourth power, is equal to a to the fourth power over b to the fourth power. So what we notice here, just like in the first problem, is the power that we raised this to, which was the four, gets raised to both the numerator and the denominator in our problem. But let's take a look at one more problem to see whether it's always as simple as this. What if we want to expand the quotient of 2 times a over c to the third power, all raised to the power of 4? Well, when we look to expand this, this is equal to 2a over c to the third power multiplied by itself four times. And just like the first problems, when we're multiplying fractions together, we multiply the numerators and the denominators together. But because the top line or the numerators is nothing but multiplication, we can order it in any order that we want. So I'm going to collect the like terms. And then I'm going to multiply the denominators. So now we look to simplify it down. Now, let's start with the 2's. We've got 2 times itself 4 times. That's equal to 2 to the 4th power. Then we've got a times itself 4 times. So that's going to be multiplied by a to the 4th power. But then we've got c to the 3rd power times itself 4 times. So what I've got here on the bottom line now is a power of a power law that I need to apply. So I keep the base the same there, and I multiply the exponents. So on the next line, on the bottom of the fraction, I'm going to have c to the power of 3 times 4, and on the top line, that's going to be equal to 2 to the power of 4, a to the power of 4. So therefore, this is equal to 2 to the power of 4, a to the power of 4, divided by c to the power of 12. So in our last two problems, when we raised a quote into a power, we raised that power to both the numerator and the denominator. 
And you can see that the same thing actually occurred here in this step here. When we raised the numerator to the power of 4, what we actually did was have the numerator of 2a all to the power of 4. Now that sort of problem is one that we raise in our multiplying indices law. And I'm going to include a link for that below if you want to recap that. But on our denominator side of things, when we raised it to the power of 4, we ended up having this c to the power of 3 all to the power of 4. And it created a power of a power indice law. Once again, I've included an explanation of the power of power laws in the links below. But what we've now discovered is that when we've got a quotient that's been raised to a power, we apply that power, we raise that power to the entire numerator and raise that power to the entire denominator. And that now brings us to our expanding quotients law, which says if a quotient in brackets is raised to a power, each number or variable in the brackets is raised to that power. For example, if we have the quotient of A over B in brackets, all raise the quotient m, that's going to be equal to a to the power of m over b to the power of m. So let's take a quick look at those first three problems if we were to use the law instead. Now back to our first problem, we had 3 over 4 all raised to the power of 5. Now our law says that if we've got a quotient that's been raised to a power, we apply that power to both the numerator and the denominator. So that's going to be equal to 3 to the power of 5 over 4 to the power of 5. Now if I want to leave this in index form, this problem is as simplified as it can get. So let's take a look at the second problem. In the second problem we had the quotient of a over b all raised to the power of 4. Now our law said that if we raise a quotient to a power, we raise that power to both the numerator and the denominator. So that's going to be equal to the numerator of a raised to the power of 4 over the denominator of b raised to the power of 4. Now once again, this is already in simplest form and we've arrived to the same answers we got before. But let's take a look at what happens if we apply that law to our third problem. Now in our third problem we had 2a over c cubed all raised to the power of 4. Now if we raise the numerator to the power of 4, what we're actually doing is raising 2a all to the power of 4, and then the denominator to the power of 4 is going to be c to the power of 3 all to the power of 4. Now our numerator here is a problem that I've covered in a previous video where we're multiplying indices. So we raise that power to both the coefficient and the unknown. So this is going to be equal to 2 to the power of 4 multiplied a to the power of 4. And then for the denominator, we're going to use the power of a power law, which I've also covered in the previous video, where we keep the base the same, but we multiply the exponents. So that's going to be equal to c to the power of 3 times 4. Now if we finally simplify that back down, it's going to be equal to 2 to the power of 4, a to the power of 4, all divided by c to the power of 12. So as you can see, our expanding quotients law does all arrive to the same solution. However, when we apply the law, it gets us there in a much more efficient manner. So now I'd like for you to have a go. In front of me, I've got six problems that I'd like you to expand and simplify and leave your answers in index form. I encourage you to have a go at expanding it fully like I did at the start of the video and then arriving to your solution so you've got a greater understanding of how this index law works.